David here with Fig Boo Don Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the latest releases from Leonardo, which is the new version of one of my favorite pens. That pen is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. And what I will be sharing with you is the Memento Zero Grande 2.0, which is a very reasonably priced offering from Leonardo. I'm going to be going over the parts and features of the MZG 2.0, how it differs from the standard Memento Zero Grande model. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about this new bottle. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Leonardo for providing this pen for review. Uh, the pen they provided came with a medium nib, but they also included a specialty nib, a uh, broad cursive smooth italic. So in the writing sample, I'll be demonstrating both nibs. Uh, there are three different versions of this pen. There is the Sea Anemone, uh, then there is the Stardust, and then there is also the Baobab. Uh, the pen arrives in this medium-sized Leonardo box. I say medium-sized just because there's a, a smaller standard Leonardo box, and then there's a box larger than this, which also includes space for a bottle of ink. So in Leonardo's world, this is more of like a medium-sized box. Uh, inside, we have a use and care guide, and then we have the pen. The version I have is the Cianonary. Um, I really like the colors of the striping of this material. Um, there's orange and purple and yellow and blue elements to this pen. Um, I feel the colors really play nicely with one another. The transitions between the different resins are not too stark, so it helps add an element of flow to something that potentially could have looked more haphazard. Now, there is one main difference between this 2.0 model and the original. And when I say the original, the Momento Zero Grande comes in many different models which can differ slightly. Uh, like some have pointed tips and some are more rounded. Then there's a, a variety of different band styles. There's uh, two different kinds of sections. Uh, some have a piston, others utilize a converter. And there can even be a, a different transition from the end of the cap to the barrel. So there's a lot of potential variety. What the 2.0 offers is a piston filler with an ink window. And I'll show you more about that ink window here in a minute. But let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. It comes to a rounded point. Uh, this transitions into the clip. Um, I've always really liked the Leonardo clips. Compared to other pens, the clip on this pen, as well as other Leonardo pens, are a bit on the shorter side in relation to the overall length of the cap. Uh, this is a bit of an homage to vintage Italian pens, which had shorter clips. Uh, and it works well in uh, materials of varying sizes. Uh, the cap angles up until about an inch from the end, where it straightens out and there are three rings. On the back side of the cap, it is engraved with the company name as well as the number of this particular pen. These are not limited editions, but many Leonardo models are numbered. Uh, there is a stair-step transition from the cap to the barrel. The barrel is straight only for about a half an inch before tapering down at an even rate of decline, and at the end, there is a band signifying the beginning of the piston knob. Then the end of the knob, like the top of the cap, comes to a rounded point. The cap twists off in just over a single rotation, and underneath you are presented with a stainless steel number no. 6 nib. Um, I'm really fond of the stamping on this nib, which could uh, really be found on a number of Leonardo pens. Uh, it just has a really nice aesthetic to it. It'll depend on your retailer of choice, but this pen comes in a variety of nib sizes. Uh, gold nibs are also available at an additional cost. Some retailers even offer a gold number eight option. I mentioned it up top, but I also have one of their broad cursive smooth italic nibs, which I'll be demonstrating during the writing sample. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The gold nibs are equipped with ebonite feeds. Uh, this 2.0 model doesn't have Leonardo's stair step section. This one begins with the flare and then slightly angles up until you reach the cap threads in the aforementioned ink window and a medium sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a piston filler. Um, I really like the design of this ink window. 
When the cap is on the pen, the window is hidden. Um, it is large enough to give you a good look at your ink situation, but not so large as to break up the overall aesthetics of the pen. Um, I feel it really fits in well as opposed to dominating the design. The pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. With the name Grande, it better be. Um, the cap does post. It does post securely, and while the cap is not overly hefty, I do find that it backweights the pen just a hair, not much. It's one of those things where if you're fond of posting your pens, then you'll probably be fine with it. One of the best things about the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande 2.0 is the price. With a stainless steel nib, it's just $225. Considering that most standard Momento Zero models are right around $200, $225 is a very attractive price. Especially since most standard stainless steel nib Grande models are around $300. If you don't have a Leonardo in your collection, or if you don't have a Grande, then the 2.0 would be an excellent entry point for you. Uh, it's available at a large number of retailers, uh, and the overall performance is outstanding. Uh, and I just like the overall look and feel of Leonardo pens. They do a great job making a quality product for a reasonable price. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample with two different nibs. Here we go with some size comparisons of the Leonardo Momento Zero 2.0, and this is the Sea Anemone. I wanted to give you another closer look at this material. I just like it. I just think that the uh, colors play nicely with each other and they look nicely all put together. In regard to some other Leonardo pens, um, this is what it looks like next to another Momento Zero Grande. This one is in uh, Jonathan Brooks' Primary Manipulation. Uh, and then here it is with a Fiore Grande from Leonardo. And then this is what it looks like with a standard Memento Zero. And this one is in the Mango. And in regard to some non-Leonardo pens, here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. And then here it is with a Parker Duofold Centennial Big Red. And then finally here it is with a Pelican M805. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Pelican M805. Then here it is with the Sailor Pro Gear. And here it is with the standard Memento Zero. Here we go with the writing sample for the Leonardo Memento. Zero Grande 2.0. And this one right here is the medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I am using here is Leonardo Purple. I felt it matched nicely with this pen. This is what Leonardo's purple looks like. In comparison to a couple of my other favorite purples, this is Pilot of Roshizuku Murasaki Shikabu. And then here it is with Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. This is what the Leonardo 40 milliliter bottles look like. Nice large necks, uh, and they have a lot of really nice inks. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, their medium nibs are very pleasant. I've uh, been fond of Leonardo's nibs. Uh, you're not going to get lots of line variation out of here. But in regard to ink flow on this medium nib, I find it to be decent. And in regard to reverse writing, it is a little bit on the scratchy side. Uh, in regard to some fast writing, The feed keeps up just fine. 
Now I did mention that they sent along another nib, which was the Cursive Smooth Italic. So let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and take this out. Now normally I wouldn't do this with the pen inked, but let's go ahead and take this out and then we'll go ahead and put the new one in. Usually I hold them and then I, I kind of hold the uh, nib firm and then twist the pen. And I kind of grab it, usually kind of in the crux of my finger here so that I can distribute as much weight as possible on there. Okay, so now we have an ink or a nib that does not have any ink in it. Now I could let this sit for a while, but let's go ahead and maybe see if we can go ahead and just prime this just slightly and see if we can get this writing sooner rather than later. Okay, we're getting some ink in there. There, I primed it a little too much, but let's actually see if we can get some ink coming out of there. Maybe I need to prime it just a little bit more. There we go. There, I think that'll do it. Normally I don't prime where it drips out, but I wanted to get this going sooner rather than later. Okay, so let's take a look at this Cursive Smooth Italic. And on this one, you're going to get a lot more or a little bit of line variation on the downstroke. So you can see on the downstroke, it's nice and thick. And then it's a little bit thinner on the uh, side stroke. Um, you aren't going to get a lot of line variation as far as pressing it. The ink flow is very juicy on this one. Uh, reverse writing. It's actually very nice. And with just some normal writing. It's very nice uh, that it has a little bit of feedback to it um, and that it does provide a, a bit of flair to your writing without much effort to it. So uh, it's uh, it's nice. I'll enjoy playing around with this. I think I'm going to leave this nib on this particular pen so I can uh, uh, play with it a little bit more. So there we have the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0. Um, I think that this is a, a nice progression for this particular model, uh, and especially for the price. I think for that 225 price for a Memento Zero Grande model, uh, it uh, you really can't beat that. So if uh, it's something that you don't already have in your collection and we're looking to potentially get one, there's pretty much no excuse not to uh, at this particular price point. Plus, I really like the looks of this pen. Until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.